Sean. I'm Wade. From Black Edge Brewery in uh, Horwich in Bolton. It started, uh, it was probably about 2007, something like that. Right, yeah, yeah. You bought me a kit for my birthday, a little, uh, it's called the Bruiser, and it came, it was a little uh, plastic bubble, and all you did is you put water in it, uh, you shook it up, you shoved it in the airing cupboard, and two weeks later you had beer. It wasn't oh, very right. good beer, but it was beer. Uh, <laughs> it was powder, wasn't it, you mixed in? Yeah. Some sort of weird powder you mixed in. So it wasn't that, like, malty? No, no. no, no, no. That's what so you bought me next, wasn't it, the Cooper's uh, Stout kit? It was just, it was just the, a syrup in it. Yeah. Mixed in, mixed yeah. it in, yeah. But it was just the waiting when you're waiting for the beer, and you're tempted to go and test it. And yeah. eventually, you've got beer, and you're sort of like quite amazed, really, that you've actually got beer, even though it's just like this little right. kit. And um, then I bought you one back because our birthdays are the same month. Yeah. So Sean did a, a version of his beer as well, and uh, we went on holiday shortly after that because um, our wives, and sisters, so we've always like gone on holiday together. Right. And we just started talking about it, talking about we should get a proper kit and do it from uh, grain nice. rather than these syrupy kits. So we came back from all day and bought a kit. And, uh, <laughs> that's the well, that's pretty much it, yeah. We, we, uh, we did it in a in little shed at the back of my house to start with, which was, yeah. well, it was peeing it down outside. It was hard work because you had about that much space and two of us trying to pass each other. So we decided <laughs> we'd upgrade our kit and... Um, get some racking and buy a, a bigger shed. So we invest in a little sub house. We put um, a rack in there, we set all the kits up, which was all stainless steel. We bought some nice kit to do it on, mm. which we bought from Leyland Holmbrew. Um, it's on our YouTube channel. <laughs> there's, a pic, there's a video of it there. And he, he actually gave us that, right? He actually told us, because we went in to buy it, didn't we? We paid about 700 quid for it. It was quite a lot oh, yeah, of money. Stainless and, uh, steel, proper kit. And we yeah. said to him, what, what do we do with this then now? And he, <laughs> he came out with loads of ingredients. Uh, threw it for you. <laughs> he, gave, he gave us a recipe sheet, didn't he? He said, this is Timothy Taylor's landlord. And he just talked us through it. So we wrote it all down, we went back, had a play with it. And the first beer, it came out pretty good, didn't it? Oh, yeah. So we just, uh, after about two or three using Joel's recipes, we started playing ourselves. Yeah. And it got to the point where we were brewing every Saturday. And two weeks after that, we were hitting the bottles that we'd, um, we'd done, or three weeks after they conditioned. And then we're going out Saturday night and we're sat in the pubs disappointed with what we're drinking because what we've been drinking in the day was better than what we had in the pubs. So then we decided, well, why don't we have a go at it? Well, you decided until we turned up and there was a two and a half grand worth of eBay kit suddenly bought. <laughs> in the shed, I'm like, what? Where's this from? Where's my half? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a, that was, a, yeah, we did. I found a, a professional, uh, well, commercial brewing kit, mm. a two and a half barrel on eBay. And at the time, believe it or not, it was 3,700 quid. If we sold that today, we'd probably get like 15, 20 grand for it. That's the, how the market's changed. But we bought this kit. It turned up on the, on the back of the van with a couple of guys who onboarded it from us. And um, we realised it physically fit in the uh, summer house, but you couldn't actually no room move. To so I had, uh, they come with 30 casts as well. The casts sat on my patio for the best part of three months, much to my wife's uh, joy. <laughs> 30 cats. Yeah, so we, we couldn't get them in, physically into the, like, the shed, the summer house, so we had to put them on the, on the patio. And then you found a little unit down here, didn't you, on Hampson Street. So we, we found a little unit, mm. which was really good. It was like a um, little ground floor and a loft. It was run down, it was like yeah. naff condition. So we spent like a couple of months just getting up to stand and putting the drainage in. And then um, we had to go at it, didn't we? So for 12, 18 months, we were just brewing on a Saturday, one or two brews. And um, my dad had gone deliver it, sell it, and deliver it for us in the week. Oh, nice! So he didn't he didn't sell it much or deliver it much after one exploded on him in the van. No, he wasn't happy with that. <laughs> he wasn't happy with the beer shower. All over the back of the van. Yeah, and all over it. Blew it blew off. <laughs> it blew a keystone because it was a hot day. It just yeah. uh, we used to use plastic casts, which were pretty terrible, really. And then what? Them clear ones. Though? 
you see knocking around. They look <coughs> no, they're like no, coloured no, plastic. No, no. It's coloured plastic. Oh, I can right. see one there just outside the. Uh, yeah, the they're cheaper than steel. So when you're starting off, it was so well. I've got all these plastic ones, and you don't know the problems. Obviously, when you're mm. starting off, you assume that the the sound. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was driving down Grindford Lane in Blackrod, and they blew the keystone, and then gushed some beer out, and. Uh, he nearly crashed the van because he <laughs> just covered him in beer. He didn't have a bulkhead or anything in, so he just covered him in beer. Plus, the keystone hit the roof of the van, so he thought he was being shot. He didn't know what was happening. He was just like a loud noise and uh, full of beer. <laughs> so, well, that's, that's that's pretty much how we started. And from there, we thought, oh, we can sell it. It's, you know, decent mm. beer. Mm. Uh, so we moved along to another unit just across the road here. And then we started doing it properly there, didn't we? I quit my job and went full time in it, and we uh, we started well, doing it as a I quit as a as a proper commercial activity. No, oh, so, up did until they, this year it's they? been going well. <laughs> <laughs> did about fourteen was it fourteen months there and then moved here? Yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. I, I do remember going to that one. Yeah. That one, yeah. Yeah, we had the bar open there very infrequently, wasn't it? Saturday or. Friday night. It's that made a move here, really, wouldn't it? Because the, we were surprised how popular it was the Saturday afternoon openings. Yeah. We were just surprised because, I mean, now, you know, the last 12, 18 months, every brewery in the land's all in tap rooms, but back then, nobody really did it. Mm-hmm. And um, to, to shove a couple of coaches right in the middle of the brewery and stick a bar right in the middle of the brewery. Whilst I'm still brewing, most of the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, are you open? There's, there's customers coming. I'm like, I've got to clean the moving yeah. boiler yet. <laughs> It was popular, and we used to get like a, at least like 40, 45 people in for the day. Yeah. And uh, at that point, this came up, and wow. I just thought, well, with the popularity of the bar over there just opening once every couple of weeks. Perhaps we could open every Friday and Saturday or whatever, and to convert the upstairs. And uh, yeah, it's been this has been a, a good move for us. The sort of three beers really that we'd consider core that we continuously brew, and that's the hot, uh, a pie. Which the first two beers we did, I'm after that, yeah. and then the black stout, which we can convert into three different beers from the, from the one batch. We do the dark rum and the black port of it. Those three beers we definitely have to keep in stock because people can always demand for it. Yeah. Um, it's probably another four or five beers. So the IPA, the Blonde, American, uh, Cascade, um, the Session, which a semi core which we sort of like brew frequently but not all the time. And then we tend to sort of like rotate it and do quite a lot of specials and do new beers because no, we find no, that's what people are interested. Yeah, a lot of uh, higher strength specials and yeah. we can keg that as well. So, right, so yeah. need to diversify a little. Yeah, because yeah. might be kind of a bit saturated. As <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's a bit extra on top of the keg, I suppose, at the, at the minute because the price of keg is it's a, it's a pre- it's higher. Isn't it's it? Certain yeah. places like Manchester that they won't take anything yeah. other than keg, to be honest. Right. Yeah, so it's worth to serve that market then, isn't it? Right? Well, they can sell it on five quid a pint then, can't they? So, yeah. on the rest. Yeah. Manchester prices. <laughs> people people always uh, query what's the difference between the keg and cask because there is a price difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they don't seem to factor in, you know, the kegs. The, we use one, one trip keg, so we have to pay for the actual keg itself for the filling of it. There's gas, there's extra conditioning time. Uh, we use things like dry hops, so there's additional ingredients costs. And there is a, di- a definite difference in the actual production cost of the keg to uh, what there is for cask. But not to the extent where we went to Manchester the other weekend, was it 10 quid a half? 10 quid a half, yeah. yeah. It stout. was 12%, yeah, yeah. mentioning yeah. no names. <laughs> <laughs> it was 12, I had a pint, didn't I? A pint, a pint of a pail, and that was 12 quid. Yeah. And that was only that was under 6%, so you're thinking, well, 12 quid for under 6% yeah, yeah, is yeah. a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, but yours are yeah. 12%, and it was imported as well. It was it? nice. It was nice, mm. but it was, it was expensive. We'd had a few by then, though, so we didn't care. No. It was basically so down, it was down to the demand, really, mm. because we thought, because we could actually sell beer to people um, in a grotty back street brewery. In effect. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't grotty, I'm not here. I've always been, I've always been high clean. It was clean. But <laughs> the area was grotty. You know, the grotty, the grotty back street is what I was alluding to, rather than the actual yeah. brewery. Um, we thought there was an opportunity there. Plus, the market was starting to change a little bit in terms of competition. So there's more and more people opening the doors with new breweries. Um, and it seemed like a good way to go would be to have your own outlets. And 
benchmarking against someone like Banktop, who opened the um, yeah, brewery tap, brew tap in um, Ashley Bridge. Yeah. yeah. They had a phenomenal amount of interest in that, and a phenomenal amount of people go through the front door buying their beer. Um, we were speaking to one of the, the guys behind the bar once, saying that they're selling 40, 50 casks a week. And you start thinking, well, if the market is becoming squeezed and more competitive, we perhaps need our own outlet. So we have gone down the route of opening this place, which does very well for us on the cask and the keg now as well, which mm. is popular. Um, and over the next two years, we probably do need to open at least another two two bar outlets probably to sustain and to survive really yeah, in, in yeah. the current marketplace so the introduction of food as well that's just yeah the, that's the, the food hopefully uh, we want that, that was basically to try and encourage people to come in earlier so we can mm. get people coming in earlier in the day because obviously you need a bit of a draw I think yeah. we can draw them on Friday at 12 o'clock um, as you can see now it's, quite, it's very quiet <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's, it's sort of like getting more people through the door to see the brewery to Try our product and yeah. uh, hopefully then go away and talk about our product in a positive yeah. uh, light. So hopefully to other landlords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're trying, do, we're trying to do new brews all the time. We're trying to do. We've got a. We've sort of like committed to a brewery, a beer launch at least once a month for two different beers. So we're trying to bring out new stuff and we're trying to stretch it a little bit as well because I think the popularity of sort of like trendy brand brewers now is massive and it's all to do with big hot flavour, big ABVs. My opinion on it is, as a brewer, is that the difficult, the art of brewing is in session beers because they're so easy to get wrong, whereas the strong beers for me are so easy because you just put my skull three bolts in, you put as much hops as you want in and you're not really going to get much go wrong. You don't you're have not to get ready to clear it either no. because oh. the market is, they don't drink it. Because some people will drink it, regardless yeah. of what it looks like. Yeah, I saw some, saw someone post the other day on Twitter, I can't think of it, in a video of his alcohol, he said, oh, it's amazing. So, and he's like, oh, that's the way I like it. Yeah. So it is going that way. Well, keg, that's keg seems, used to be. for some reason, keg is acceptable, cloudy. I mean, our keg now, we don't bother finding it, so it gets served, it's cloudy mm. when you serve it. Yeah. The people drinking the keg never come back and say, I mean, you, you get one or two, but never come back and say there's something wrong with that. But if you serve a pint of ale in the same manner, they come back and say, right, it's off that. And everybody's got this perception that cloudy beer means off beer. And we've always said on our brewery trips, is, you know, if you buy a beer in a pub and it's got a haze on it, or it's cloudy or whatever it is, taste have a smell of it. If it smells, you know, palatable, and it smells like something you want to drink, taste it. And if it tastes good, just drink it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't need to, you know, we don't need to perfect clear beer because Beer that's actually unfined and hazy has more of a flavour, it has more body, it has more flavour and this, the problem that we're putting this to get it clear, strips out half the, the flavour so. yeah. and that's why keg I think is, is, you know, camera have sort of like fought against keg for a long time but the keg beer is on the rise because in a lot of cases it has more flavour than the cast beer because yeah. we're so obsessed with cast beer in finding it and making sure that it's clear and it's, um, it is a problem because you do strip a lot out, you do strip yeah. a lot of of the taste, the flavour, you know, we can test a beer two, three days into fermentation as it's finishing off and you taste it and you think, oh, superb, nailed it, absolutely got flavour right. You taste it the day after, it's like, oh, it's still good. By the time you find it, it's going in the cast, you're like, it's no body it's to lost it. something, it's, gone. it's just lost some of its yeah. character. So, the worst thing you can do is filter beer, yeah. like some breweries do, just filter it out, mm. <clears throat> just, just strips everything in. Yeah, you see some that are like, it's like through a window, isn't it? Sometimes yeah. it's that clear. It's like I don't know. Is that <coughs> like, like, so from what, what you've just said there, it's like what that beer could taste like from if, like before it was refined. It's like yeah. it's just somewhat it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Well, we so did an experiment a few weeks ago. We did a, a beer launch here, and we did an experiment. I think it was the kiwi beer, and we put the cast side by side, and we pulled some off unfined. And we did the fine, in the, the fine test. And I must admit, I was convinced. We, we cocked it up a little bit because we forgot to get the blindfold. So it <laughs> wasn't quite blind. <laughs> yeah, if we did, I'm, I'm convinced if we'd done it blind, yeah. that the unfine would have wiped the floor with the fine when people just tasted it. But because we forgot the blindfold, and even though we asked people to close their eyes, they obviously didn't have a little peep as they were doing it. Yeah. It came out round about almost 60% unfined. 
but there was 40% still preferred the find, and I'm still convinced if we'd had the blindfolds, that wouldn't have happened. I think it was yeah, because yeah. they looked at it as well and thought, yeah. no, yeah. that still looked better. The unfind one, though, was pretty clear in itself. It cleared itself for some reason. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, so that probably didn't help. It wasn't as murky as probably it could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get that flavour. But we are trying to, we're trying to sort of like separate our cask from keg at the minute, so we've got a craft product and a cask product. And going back to what I was saying about, you know, all the sort of like trendy brands who just basically throwing a load of hop into a beer, for me that's relatively easy to do. Um, yeah. And so we're starting to do a few beers like that just to show that actually well, we can do that as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm a first time as well, we're not like experimenting for months and months trying to get a batch right, it's just we'll put it out as it is and let people yeah. decide and we've had some good results. Yeah. Right. We've had some good results with the beers we've, we've turned out. The double IPA, the eight percent, yeah. first batch went out. Second batch I think would be better because we we'll take some learnings from it, but the first batch was you know up there with anybody else's eight percent beer, so it's <laughs> That's brilliant. Still going in the bottles, isn't it? It's mm. alright. Yeah, we've got a website which is www.blackedgebrewery.co.uk. Um, we're on Facebook, Black Edge Brewing Company Limited. We're on Twitter at Black Edge Beers. Instagram. Can't remember what happened this but we're on Instagram. This is our social media now as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're on YouTube, we've got a YouTube channel.